Hello, and thank you for joining us again. This is Scott, your, well, Laura's favorite co-host from Married with Comics. Um, we're back today, and I'm here on my own to do a video a little more in-depth on one of my favorite Marvel characters of all. Stay tuned to find out who that is. So real quick, I want to thank everybody who was part of our 250 subscriber giveaway. And congratulations to those of you who did win. Uh, we actually wound up having three separate giveaways. It was awesome uh, doing that live show with you guys and getting to interact and actually see your questions and answer them as they came in. Laura and I both had a lot of fun. But don't forget, we have a 500 subscriber level giveaway. And it's for this beauty right here. So this is non-stop Spider-Man issue one. It has been both remarked and signed by the artist, the one and only Ken Lashley, the great artist from Canada. Um, I will say this, I have teased Laura and uh, she's mentioned it before in other videos, but like if, if we don't hit 500 subscribers, this baby's getting slabbed, I'm keeping it. I know already I have a spot right right there on the wall where I'm putting it. So that being said, it's only a partial joke because I really want this, but I would much rather give it away to one of you guys. So if you share, talk to your friends about it, you know, send links and we can get up to 500 subscribers. This little baby will be going to somebody else's house. You just have to send me a picture of it once you get it put up somewhere so I can like visit with it every now and then, okay? So when we talk about favorite characters, we all have them. We have various different reasons, though, for having favorite characters. Um, sometimes it's because we have a deep personal relationship we feel like with them or a connection. We see something of ourselves in them or perhaps something that we aspire to be in them. Sometimes it's because, you know, we love what they do, how they act, uh, a certain tagline that they're known for we find hilarious or Maybe even, you know, it's a villain and maybe sometimes we're rooting for the bad guy because we feel like, you know, we can relate to them being an underdog or maybe they're misunderstood and we feel that way. It can be any number of things. One of my favorite superhero characters, though, of all time is the Black Widow. She's been around a long, a long time, a lot longer than those of you who may only be familiar with the Marvel Cinematic Universe are aware of. The idea, though, of the Black Widow to me has always appealed to me because of a couple of reasons. The one big one being she is originally taken into a situation and trained and groomed to perform a certain function by what you could consider to be a not the best element of society, not, not necessarily by the good guys. Okay, it's all a matter of perspective. But in short, the majority of the world would agree these people that were trained uh, the Black Widow from childhood to be an assassin were not doing it to bring about world peace. They were bringing in about their rule in, in their mind, the way that the world should be. Um, but then you take her as a character as she progresses and she evolves and she begins to work for, you know, the side of good. Um, it's not an easy road it's not an easy choice and as she makes that change she's questioned on both sides as to the legitimacy of it it's kind of that classic like well i'm a secret agent or am i a double agent or am i a triple agent like you know it, you really honestly get so many different levels of kind of intrigue going on with this character and she can be in multiple different storylines she can be fighting with the avengers she can be, uh, you know, helping them bring in the Winter Soldier. She could be the love interest of the Winter Soldier. Um, she could be living in a sort of WandaVision-esque la-la land um, with a husband and children and completely oblivious to her superhero powers and her abilities. Which brings us to the newest series of Black Widow. So... Um, a lot of stuff has been coming out because of, uh, you know, a lot more hype about her because of the movie uh, that came out this year. I will say that I was much more interested in this new run, uh, but I was very excited to see the movie as well. The reason I really wanted this first run, though, is because look at who's on issue one and issue two. It's J. Scott Campbell covers 
if you know anything about us, you know we absolutely are huge fans of J. Scott Campbell. I love his artwork. And when I saw that he was going to be doing uh, these covers, I told Laura, I'm like, that one, that one's coming home. Uh, those period, if the series is terrible, the writing is terrible, these two are coming home. So back to the story, though. Um, in this version, this actually starts off with us finding Natasha living in Southern California with a family. And having a husband who's a doctor and like, you know, being a, a cool mom and we really honestly are kind of drawn into this whole, like I said, it reminded me a lot of WandaVision. It's like this almost a fantasy. Like I almost expected her to wake up at some point and for it to have all been a dream. Come to find out it wasn't a dream. Her a rogues gallery of some of her greatest enemies got together and have, have basically submitted her to like a mind control thing. And they have built this fake world around her. Um, and they are kind of monitoring her in order to essentially like give themselves a break. I mean, think about it. If she's a happy suburban mom, she's not out there kicking butt and taking names. You don't have to be looking over your shoulder anymore. If you're on her list, you know, um, you can go about your nefarious business kind of scot-free or at least without one of the big major players breathing down your neck. So one of the things that, um, we find out though, is that it's not just her enemies that have, you know, put her in this place and, and are kind of monitoring her, her, her friends and some of her co-workers and past lovers uh, also notice that something's a little off with Natasha. Um, so they start investigating. In the end, the, the plot is revealed. Um, she is kind of uh, woken from this deep sleep that they have her in, sleep state that's got her convinced that this is reality. And when it all comes crashing down, she makes very tough choices. Uh, some heavy stuff goes down. Uh, the writing is really good. Um, and then she does like one of the most un Black Widow things I could have imagined. If you followed the character for a long time, she finds out who's behind it and she doesn't go after him. It's not just like, I don't want vengeance. It's more like she's kind of been hit in a hard hard way in a very soft spot for the first time and she kind of just takes that inwardly and decides that she's going to do something more productive with it um that being finding out about um some other people that are in need of help i won't say that she goes into like a a rescue mode versus a vigilante mode, but she definitely takes a term that I was surprised by and I'm really intrigued by. And it also brings in Yelena, who you also saw in the movie, um, and her kind of team up. Uh, as the story progresses, they have some other characters, some other, you know, foes that they have to face. Um, and the end result of it is that you see the Black Widow in a new way. We see her in a different way. Now, at the end of uh, one of the Avengers movies, we kind of get the idea um, she's at the new Avengers building and she is talking about this new group of recruits and they're, they're going to train them. And you get the idea that she maybe has moved into like a mentor role um, as well as still being a field agent. This run though this series she most definitely takes on like a caretaker mentorship with Yelena of some new characters one in particular um, and they are hot on the trail of somebody but they are working as a kind of individualized or an isolated team it's not the usual cast of characters you see and she is very much following this path of I won't call it redemption, but she's she's using her her abilities in a different way than I've seen before. Um, she's still kicking butt and taking names. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Definitely. But it was a neat twist for me. It was kind of a nice storyline and it's continuing. This latest issue that I just finished reading um, here, issue nine, and I absolutely want to show this cover off because that's the cap 80th anniversary, which I thought was just stunning. Um, in the latest issue, though, you see a continuation of this storyline between uh, Natasha, Yelena, and their new friend, uh, new trainee. And I hope they continue on with this and they have multiple different ways they can go with it. 
I'm interested to see what happens. Um, back though to just my my general reasons for loving the Black Widow. I mean, you know, you get in various versions you have seen, uh, whether in screen or in, in movie uh, or in book form, the versions of her life where she has these memories. There's a series where she goes back in, in her memories uh, to the training in the Red Room and she uh, seeks out this one in particular person who is responsible for that. It's similar in a way to the movie that just came out this past summer. Um, it's different in other key ways. Uh, in the book form, the Red Guardian is not her fake father. It's her husband at one point. He was a celebrated cosmonaut um, who then goes on to be their super soldier, the, the USSR's version of the super soldier, um, to kind of fight against Captain America or oppose him. And in the end, like him and Natasha wind up both being experimented on in similar ways. And it explains a lot more of why, like, she has not aged. You know, she started in the late 40s, 50s, beginning of the Cold War, um, same time as Cap. That's one of the reasons why I've gone back since reading that book series and watched some of the earlier Cap and Avengers movies and gotten a little bit more between the line stuff from the interactions between her and Steve Rogers. Now, it could be that I'm creating something that wasn't actually in the movie director's, you know, desires because of the other knowledge that I have now from the storyline. Or it could be that the director really did a good job and did his homework and he was pulling from that in order to make the, the kind of chemistry between those two characters really pay homage to their, their, their literature uh, history. In short, though, she has this terrible past. I mean, no matter which version of it you look at, abducted as a child, you know, forced to do these training programs uh, at one point where pretty much it's pretty clear that she's been given a hysterectomy so they don't ever have to worry about her having children there's a reason why in the beginning of um, the new series that she has a child but i won't get into that i don't want to give away too many spoilers because if you haven't started the new series yet if you're waiting on the trades you need to get the trade and read it or you need to just jump into the back issues if you can find them um, and and hop on board because you're going to love it but she has this awful upbringing. She's trained. She's, you know, basically working for, and, and again, like I said, the bad guys. And then she has kind of an epiphany moment where she's on the run and she's given grace by a character who's been sent out to stop her. Um, and as a result of all of that, she starts kind of seeing that, hey, there's more that can be done with her skills than just simply killing people and putting them out uh, based on an order given by someone sitting behind a red wall. Um, that kind of internal struggle, though, that she faced when she made the decision to go good, I think a lot of us have something like that we can relate to in our lives, whether it's, you know, hey, this is a, this is a terrible habit. Hmm? Um, I'm addicted to it, uh, but I, and I know it's bad for me or it's bad for the people around me, but... I just can't stop. I have to make that choice. I have to have the willpower. I have to go against the grain. I have to do whatever it is that's necessary in order to make that improvement, right? And I'm gonna be possibly criticized, possibly chastised, possibly, you know, kicked out or whatever. Um, I feel a certain way about a certain subject and everybody else in my family feels a different way. But if I speak up for myself, you know, then they may not want me at Thanksgiving dinner. You know, pick your situation, fill in all the blanks. But at some point we face that type of kind of moral dilemma. Do you do the right thing for you or do you keep doing what's right for everybody else? Or is there a way to balance both? So the Black Widow to me has always been an interesting character to follow because of that struggle that she faces, the way she handles it. And she doesn't always handle it the way I would, but at the same time, it's interesting to see all these different writers um, kind of perspective on this character that's been around for so long and been through so many different eras even in time and has evolved in so many ways and in my opinion she could be like one of the, the keystone characters for the whole um, Marvel team period you know because even her standalone stuff um, how it ties back into her teamwork and how you get characters like at the very end of the Black Widow movie you see Yelena talking to someone um, who is kind of prominent in 
the comic book uh, lore, but she, she even as an individual agent, or even when she's trying to get away from it all, or even when she's you know teamed up with uh, you know the Avengers or whoever, she has this ability to kind of pull people and circumstances around her together um, to make it a much more interesting story than just strictly a black and white. Here's the good guy. Here's the bad guy. Here's the good team. Here's the bad team. They're going to fight. Somebody's going to win, you know, because she has this inner thing going on in her background with her everywhere she is, whether she's alone or with somebody else. Um, she carries all that kind of that gravitas with her. And that makes any situation that she's in more interesting to me when you see the decision she makes and you stop and think, I wonder why she did that. It could it be this. Could it be that? Could it be because of this? So. She also, um, if you didn't read it, there was a Taskmaster, um, this little mini series that came out um, in book form. I think it was only five issues long. Um, it came out before the movie because, again, they knew that you know the, in the movie Taskmaster was going to be featured. It's different from the movie version in in, a, in several ways, um, but in the movie version, to be honest with me, I was kind of disappointed by the Taskmaster in the Black Widow movie. However, I will say, if you pick up that, it should be out in trade soon. Um, if you pick up that run and read it, there again, Black Widow's in that as well. And you get some really interesting um, feedback on the Taskmaster character that they didn't give you as much of in the movie. So I would definitely recommend that. If you watched the movie and you liked it, and you pick up the new Black Widow series, the new Taskmaster miniseries, and read them, you're gonna love them. If you watch the movie and you hated it, read the new Black Widow series, give it a shot because it's better in so many ways, even though I thought the movie was good, I personally was a fan. Um, the series is a little bit better and the Taskmaster series specifically is a hundred times better than the movie portrayal. So, Black Widow, I love her. I've told you of reasons why. I like her in the movie versions. I like her in the old comic book versions. I like her in the new run. Um, I am interested in hearing what you think. Uh, anytime that I share my thoughts and opinions, that's exactly all what they are. It's my opinions. I want to hear your opinions too. Let me know. Do you love her? Do you hate her? Do you wish she's still with the Red Guardian? Do you think that her and Yelena should be, you know, partners? Do you think that her and Yelena should be adversaries? Um, you know, let me know. Uh, comment down below, ask questions, and we will get to them as we do our future videos. Anyhow. Share, subscribe, click the links below. Let us know what you think, and we will talk to you all again soon.